We often hear about the terms grey matter and white matter when talking about the brain's ability to process information. What actually is grey and white matter? What are the differences and how does it actually affect the way we think and learn? Well, fairly obviously, the primary difference between the two is the different colours. However, within the brain, the centre part of the brain contains the highest proportions of white matter and the area closer to the skull itself has more grey matter. There is also a core of grey matter in the middle of the brain as well. Additionally, the amount of white matter grows significantly as new skills are being mastered. It can start to decline in later years, as it so is the case with grey matter. Men also have a slightly higher proportion of white matter than women do. Reasons why, we'll get into that later on. The brain also contains a vast quantity of nerve cells which are connected to each other by axons or chains of cells which can branch into several different strands connecting dendrites which are the kind of tree-like clusters on the end a great many roots or branches spreading out from the other end. Now you could view the axons as a kind of road network connecting towns or cities of dendrites sometimes very close to each other other times a significant distance away. Unlike a road network, these axons aren't carrying cars. Instead, they're carrying electrical impulses. Because the brain has so many of these road-like structures, all very close to each other, it would be fairly easy, if nothing was done about it, for the electrical signal to lose its way or to jump from one axon to the other. So, in order to prevent this happening, the brain does the equivalent to process of erecting kind of crash barriers on the sides of the roads, and also widening the road from a minor country road to a multi-lane highway. That way the signals find it very easy to travel fast along the axon superhighway, very difficult to kind of leave the prescribed route. The way the brain achieves this feat of biological engineering is with a substance called myelin. This myelin is a fatty insulating material that can be wrapped around the axons much like kind of insulation around copper wires in most electrical devices. The more myelin that's actually wrapped around the axons, the faster the electrical signal can pass along the system to its required des destination. And it's this fatty myelin which is responsible for the white colour of these cells, hence the regions of the brain where it's most common. The step change here in speed is really remarkable, with the thickest myelinated coated axons transmitting signals up to 1,000 times faster than the non-myelinated axons. And in large animals, this myelination can mean that their limbs can still react very rapidly with the messages being transmitted rapidly through the nervous system. And in the human brain, I mean the information can be passed rapidly from one part of the brain to another. As the brain is growing and developing, these highways which are in constant use are being upgraded with more myelin as the brain literally becomes hardwired with primary pathways. As the brain ages, the amount of myelin coated axons do reduce. This is a result of the axons with the thinner coating of myelin disappearing, like a kind of minor disused roadway being come overgrown and blending into the countryside, just leaving a network of major roads behind. The decline in the amount of myelin-coated axons actually happens rather late in life. The height of the myelin-coated axons in humans is generally around about middle age. The weeding out of the thinly coated myelin occurs towards the end of human life. This does mean that as humans get older, they literally do become set in their ways. If, however, the major axon highways have their myelin-coating damaged, this can lead to serious brain conditions such as multiple sclerosis. So if this white matter is enabling the rapid transfer of information, what's actually the grey matter involved with? Well, those normally called grey matter really should be called pink matter, since the other thing, other than levels of myelin, the main difference between white matter and grey matter is the blood supply. And grey matter cells have a far greater supply of oxygenated blood than does the white matter. Now it's fairly well known that for its size the human brain uses up a substantial amount of the body's oxygen supply. The result also generates a significant amount of heat. However what's 
a little bit less well known is that of the approximately 20% of the body's oxygen supply that's actually being used by the brain, almost 95% of it is being used by the grey matter in the brain. And this is despite it representing slightly less than half the mass of the brain and does the white matter. So, in order to need all this extra oxygen, something rather special must be occurring within the grey matter in the brain. Well, the grey matter is where the information provided by the senses has been processed and decisions are being made. Or broadly speaking, the grey matter is where the cognitive operations take place. So memories, language, critical and analytical thinking, all the functions directed by the grey matter in your brain. Now, the amount of grey matter, like the amount of white matter, also declines with age, also with alcohol consumption. However, the peak of the brain's grey matter occurs far earlier in humans than does the peak of the white matter. Basically, grey matter is likely to peak in your early 20s and already be in decline by the time you reach your 30s. This decline is rather slow. It's one of the reasons that many of the great geniuses and creative people of the world, their major ideas and creative works are during this stage in their lives. Adding all this up, the grey and white matter work together in a very coordinated way. The white matter bringing in all the information from the senses and other parts of the brain into the grey matter. The information is then processed and decisions are made. The result of these decisions are then being relayed back out again by the white matter to wherever the action needs to be taken. But some skills are practiced more frequently, so like riding a bike, juggling, or even driving. The pathways and reactions become faster and more precise allowing for a better overall performance with that particular skill. However, it isn't only skills and positive aspects that can be reinforced. Addictive behaviours and other negative personality traits can also be strengthened. If these happen early on in life, it can be difficult to reverse later as the pathways have already been made fairly substantial. So what do the differences in proportions of white and grey matter mean differences between men and women? The well, first thing to say is that these are averages. Of course, within the sexes, we'll get a very wide spread of abilities, far wider than the average difference between men and women. However, uh, given that caveat, men are they're more white matter, more likely to bring information from their senses to the calculating part of the brain, also bring it faster than women. <coughs> However, women will be able to use more grey matter to solve a particular issue or recall a particular piece of information. This could lead to some basic differences in their general abilities. Like that men are more likely to be better at high speed eye hand coordination, and women more likely to be better at languages. However, one thing that can be said about humans and their brains is they do use virtually all of their brains, even if they don't use it all of the time. The idea that humans only use 10% of their brain is utter and complete nonsense.